Hey guys, thanks for watching. So today I'm going to show you how to install a JK to WJ axle swap kit. So this is from Iron Rock Off-Road. It gives you everything you need, including the instructions, which I thought were really helpful and very detailed. But I'll just give you a little rundown of how I did things here. So I started off by cutting all the old brackets off, and you won't need any of them. And doing this is really easy with a plasma cutter, which I have, thankfully, and it makes it a lot faster. However, you just have to be careful that you don't cut into the actual tube at all. Sometimes the, the arc tries to go down toward the tube, especially depending on where you have your ground clamp set up. But just be careful, and it's easily done with the plasma cutter. With that being said though, you still will need an angle grinder, and that's how I got all of the cuts down smooth. And then I also used the, um, I used a bigger angle grinder with a flap disc on it to get the whole tube smooth. So the next part is just welding on the nuts to the bottom of the truss. Put the center section of the truss on top of the axle. You have to center it up and also get it perfectly level. So you need the pinion angle set to, I believe it's six degrees, the instructions say, but I'll have to check back on that. And then you set the center section of the truss up to zero. And now I'm just kind of wedging in a little chisel here just to get it to stay where I want it. I also put 90 degree angle uh, magnets, they're kind of just metal holders. I put them on each end so I can measure easily from top to top. And it's just so I can center up the uh, center section. Once I got it in place, I tacked it down and then I ran a couple beads on each. I skipped through part of that just uh, for time's sake. So the next section is to uh, set up the coil buckets and there's little gussets and there's some other pieces that get installed on them but I just put everything on where they go and then I uh, tack them on and then I straighten them up with a, uh, with a square and a little hammer which you'll see in a minute. So here I'm just straightening them up before I actually weld them down. And now I'm just throwing some beads down on each of those pieces. You only have to weld one side of them according to the instructions. So once you get those welded in, I welded um, the little, I guess it's the emergency brake cable holder, I believe, welded that on. And then just the uh, inside or the top of each of those pieces where they, the two, the gusset and the coil bucket join. You also need this, this lag bolt that gets welded down and that's to hold down the, um, like the upper part of the coil retainer I guess it's called so I just put it in straight held it down and welded it on and then part of the other the other part of the coil bucket retainer gets welded on here I centered it up and tacked it down and then welded it on Here I'm just measuring where the coil bucket gets located. The instructions will tell you that and I thought it was a little confusing. It's not the end of the bucket, it's actually where the that closer the most centermost gusset is located. So that's where you look at it and then uh, measure to there and just make sure that that is also set to zero degrees. Here I'm putting together the lower control arm and shock mounts. Just have to put the shock mount on, weld it on, and then those can both be installed.
So you just repeat that for both of them, and then I cleaned both of them up as well, just to get the um, get the welding areas cleaned off and any slag or whatever. So here's the end product. We got everything welded on, except I forgot to put the sway bar brackets on, which I'll get to shortly. So hopefully you enjoy. Um, if you have any tips or comments or questions, feel free to let me know, ask. But this is what we got, and then I'll follow up with uh, some more videos shortly. Thank you.